Hello survivors, Kato Genesis here. In this guide, I'll be covering how to construct and maintain basic settlements in Fallout 4. There are numerous perks tied to settlements themselves, primarily Local Leader. So if you intend on spending a lot of time and resources building up a thriving community, Local Leader will ensure that you get repaid through extra resources, food, and or caps. Let's not jump too far ahead though, we'll start with the basics. When you go to a settlement's workbench and activate build mode, you're shown the overall status of your settlement at the top. It displays the population, food, water, power, defense, beds, and happiness. The total population your settlement can have is determined by your charisma value plus 10. So say you have a charisma of 6, the total population you can have is 16 in any settlement. Food, water, defense, and beds should match up or be higher than your population if you wish to keep your settlers happy. Happier settlers means more resources produced. This can also be monitored from your pit boy in the data workshop section. So you can check up on your settlements even if you're not present. Wood and steel are your primary building materials and the most plentiful. After a workbench is accessible, potential settlements come with their own resources in the forms of piles of junk, trees, and other various items which can be scrapped and recycled into usable components. Anything you decide to scrap will have its materials transferred directly to the workbench. If you find yourself coming up short for components, I recommend taking a trip to nearby locations, scavenging all of the junk you can carry that isn't nailed down, and returning to your settlement's workbench, at which point you can use the store all junk function to offload all that you've gathered. In short, when just starting out, scrap everything. Many of these settlements have perfectly usable pre-existing structures and buildings that can't be scrapped. These can be built onto or reconstructed and furnished at the cost of less materials to be used by you and your settlers. But using pre-existing structures is just an option. When starting your own building, you have the choice of using prefabricated pieces or starting from scratch. The prefab choices have connecting pieces, partial, and even full shacks for you to use and are great if you just want to get established. If you are starting from scratch, your starting point should be shack foundations. Both are in the wood floor section. These will make a nice flat building platform atop the uneven wasteland terrain. After this, you have your choice of walls to throw around it, can add a roof to make it an actual shelter, a doorway with some stairs propped up to it, and there you have a basic, if not bare, shack. As for furnishings, this is the point where cloth becomes a primary resource too. You can go into furniture and set up a bed, shelves, a table, and maybe some chairs and decorate to your heart's content. Also, leave room for expansion. Your new settlers will need somewhere to sleep. As per the usual, sleeping in a bed in these settlements will give you a rested bonus, which means more experience for a good amount of time. While nice to have, power isn't required beyond a recruitment beacon. More advanced defenses, water purifiers, and lighting sure are nice though. Let's start with a small generator under the power section. This requires steel, gears, rubber, copper, and ceramic to build. If you don't have all of these materials on hand, don't worry, you can select Tag for Search, and while scavenging nearby areas for needed parts, a magnifying glass will show up on the items you need. Keep in mind too, copper is used for wiring things together, so it's a good idea to keep that tagged if nothing else. Once our source of power has been placed, after highlighting it you have the choice to run wires. Well, you'll need something to power first. The connectors and switches section contains conduits, which you can stick to the side of your shack, connect to your generator, and it's powered to that conduit in a small area. After this, place some freestanding or wall-mounted lighting nearby the conduit and they should light up. If not, make sure they're close enough to the conduit and there's a wire running from the conduit to the generator. If you choose to replace the conduit with a wall-mounted switch, you can then turn your lights on and off without having to kill the generator every single time. To sustain a population, you'll want the other necessities aside from shelter. In the resources section, you have food and water. You can place water pumps with concrete, steel, and a gear just about anywhere that's not paved for a basic water source. Crops can be placed the same way, but require that aid item, such as corn, melons, moot fruit, potatoes, etc. Once placed, you can also use these yourself for some extra healing if necessary. Before jumpstarting an actual community, it's great to have a goal for your settlement before going too much further. So will your settlement be a farm with a wide supply of crops, a source of raw materials for more construction, a bustling trade hub, or a simple player home, or any combination of those? And how will you defend it from the harsh wasteland? Having an initial plan will help you visualize what your finished settlement will look like. Once that goal is in mind, it's time to send an open invitation to settlers. Once you're ready to take on some settlers, you'll need a recruitment beacon and a way to power it. 
The beacon itself requires circuitry, crystal, copper, steel, ceramic, and rubber to construct. If you don't have these components on hand, like mentioned before, you can tag the items for search so you can find them easier during your time scavenging other areas. Once you've placed your beacon, you need only wire it to a generator and await your new arrivals. One to two curious settlers should arrive shortly, while the rest will arrive over a longer period of time as word spreads about your settlement. There is a variety of commands you can give your new settlers. If you've placed crops or scavenging stations from build mode after you highlight a settler, you can then command them to go to a certain spot or assign them to these resources. Assigning settlers to resources will allow them to generate junk items and or produce, and if assigned to a store, they'll generate bottle caps. Unassigned settlers will passively generate junk and components over time. All of the resources your settlers generate go directly to the workbench, so gathering net materials from this settlement and others becomes a breeze. Defenses are an important part to any settlement. You don't want to come back to find your crops and generators destroyed. To resolve this, you can build guard posts, turrets, and traps. Guard posts are the most cost-effective, however, and three of them can be manned by one settler for a total of six defense. When placed, you need only assign a settler to one of them, and they will patrol between these three guard posts. And of course, after turning this settler into a guard, it might be a good idea to talk to them and open up trade, and give them some equipment to better defend themselves and the other settlers. Keeping the settlers in a sunny disposition is simpler than you'd expect. The core of your community's happiness is having enough beds under a roof, food and water to supply everyone, remember at least one of each for every person, and some decent defenses along with it. If you'd like a little extra, setting up shops will also create a positive environment. Beyond that, settlers will sometimes ask for help with rescuing a fellow resident or pest control of the local marauders, which will also raise their happiness if completed. But overall, these last couple things aren't necessarily required to keep things happy. If you're looking to work on a new settlement, you can command almost any of your settlers to relocate to the new area as long as you have access to the workbench there. Alongside that, local leader is an excellent perk to have, especially when it comes to managing multiple settlements. With the first rank, you gain the ability to assign a settler to a supply line and connect to another settlement. This lets resources be shared between connecting settlements for the sake of workbenches as well as armor, weapon, cooking, and chemistry stations. The second rank of local leader allows for some more advanced items to construct like setting up shops and workstations, really helping to fill out an already thriving settlement. And that is the Basic Settlements Guide. Explore your options and experiment with your settlements. Have you built one already? What is it like? Do you have any tips related to settlements? Leave a comment, I'd love to hear about it. If you found this guide useful, entertaining, or a little of both, you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching. This is Kato Genesis, and may you wander the Commonwealth like you own it.